Recently, Fillout came out with their amazing new feature that rivals Calendly, allowing you to offer up a form link so that people can reserve time on your calendar and schedule events with you and other members of your team. Well, in this video, I want to break down for you how easy it is to take that information once somebody submits that form and schedules on your calendar and to actually put it into a database so that you can run an organization and take different action off of it. Things like paying invoices, checking the status of these calls, etc. is all possible if you consolidate that data. That's exactly what we're doing in this video, so if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth. This is Gap Consulting, and it's our mission to help you get the most out of no-code tools. Fillout is one of our favorite no-code tools, especially in the way that they have just unloaded this new feature unsuspectingly on us, and it's the new scheduler feature that we're going to be diving into again here with this video. But here we're going to be specifically talking about how we can integrate this data to a data source. In this case, we're going to be using Airtable, but you could be using any of the database backends that Fillout integrates so nicely with. Now, before we get into the heart of the video, I first want to invite you to join me for automation training in general. If you love what you learn here in this video, you're going to be blown away by the potential of no-code automation. In my free automation training, I'm teaching you the fundamentals of building automation in no-code so that you can start reclaiming your time and automating your repetitive tasks. If you want to learn that, grab that free training at gapconsulting.io slash webinar dash registration. I'll include links wherever you found this video, but without further ado, let's hop on into my screen and take a look at what we're dealing with. Now, first and foremost, I'm logged in to fill out here. I encourage you to follow along with me. If you already have a fill out account, open it up, follow along. If not, please consider using our affiliate link. It's a great way for you to show some love back to the channel. Now, when you're inside a fill out, you're going to see a page similar to this, although you probably have fewer forms than this. And inside of fill out, you'll now see the new scheduling component. So let's click over there and we are taken to the section where we only see those scheduling forms. Now I've shared scheduling with other members on my team, but nobody else has actually filled out their calendar yet. You can see that the only person who successfully integrated their calendar was me. And so uh, in this way, I'm only going to be able to create scheduling forms for myself. Now, I also want to highlight that those people on your fill out account who have admin level permission, they can also create scheduling forms on behalf of other people on your team who have signed up. So anybody who has basic level information can have scheduling links created for them by your admin users inside of your fill out account. All right. So for us, I'm just going to create a new scheduling form and you'll see how quickly this comes together. I'm going to call this 15 min chat and I can change the duration here to a 15 minute increment. I can also choose a meeting location and I can pick from Google Meets, Zoom, in person, etc., or a custom option. For us, I'm just going to pick Zoom and it's automatically integrating with my Zoom account and continue. Now, that is how easy it is to set this up the first time. Uh, I've already gone in here and set up my availability and things like that, but now I have a brand new scheduling link that I can share with others. Now, before it's actually live, of course, I have to publish it, but let's first kind of walk through it and see what happens. Someone's going to see my availability on my calendar. They'll make a selection. They'll be asked for their name and email. They can add guests and then they will schedule the event. Now, of course, I could add other stuff to this. That's the whole beauty of a fill out scheduler. Down here at the bottom, I can add other pages and bring in other components. I can collect payments with Stripe, just add regular form questions, all kinds of different things will be available to you as well. Now, for us, I'm keeping it simple. It's just going to be this. So let's go ahead and publish this brand new form. Now that it's live, we want to see what happens when people actually submit this information. Now, thing one is it's already connected with our calendar, which means that it knows what our availability was when someone was scheduling. It makes sure that we don't get double booked. It only allows people to schedule times when we are available. But also it then goes and creates a new event in our calendar, not only to share with us, but also to share with anybody who was scheduling that event. 
So that way everybody has the same event in their calendar. That is already taken care of. What we're diving into here is capturing that data and putting it in a backend database. Now the reasons that you might do this are plentiful. You might want to collect every single scheduled consultation and store it in a database for invoicing purposes uh, so that you can check on clients who are getting met with. I mean, there are numerous different reasons that as a services based business that is conducting some sort of meetings, you might need a copy of that meeting that is outside of your calendars and actually in some sort of database. That's what we're doing right now. So let's flip into the next section here, which is integrations. And now we're gonna do a search for whatever system we're using to store this information. I'm gonna be using Airtable in our example. You could use SmartSuite, you could use HubSpot, Monday. There are a number of different places that you might choose to store this information. So first I'm just gonna do a quick search for our software. Here is Airtable. I already have my Airtable connection and I will say next. Now I need to find the database in my Airtable account that I'm looking for and I just created a brand new blank database called Fillout Scheduler. Let's take a quick look at Fillout Scheduler. This is the new database I built in Airtable. It only has the four default fields. In fact, I'm gonna get rid of these fields just now so that we can uh, just start with a clean slate. Now, all I have is this name field. I'll click up here now and rename our table. Let's go with consultations and save that up. So I have these three blank records, nothing in here yet. Flipping back now to fill out, I can refresh this connection and it's going to see that one and only one table consultations. So now once I've connected this, it's gonna ask me, what do you wanna do with this information? Are you creating a new record when somebody submits the form? This is most common. Or are you updating an existing record? So in a case where you already had a consultation record there, you might have a separate form for people to fill out that allows you to update and change the dates or do other things of that nature. But for our example here, we are creating a new record when the form is submitted. So note that we can also prefetch records. We can pull information from Airtable when people are filling out the form and actually pre-fill some of the data in the form using the data that already lives in Airtable. So if we have somebody's email or name, they don't have to enter it in. We can fill out the form with that information when we prefetch. We're not doing that here. And we're not going into the advanced section either where we can prevent duplicates. So for us, we're just creating a record and then we need to map it to our Airtable base. So when the form is submitted, map it to Airtable. So, so simple. We just need to add the fields here. Now we only have our one Airtable field, but let's look at the different pieces of information that we have or that we will get from fillout. There are URL parameters, yes, there are calculations we can look at, date utilities. What I really care about is diving into this right here. This is the data that we're getting when somebody fills out our form. It's an easy form for them to fill out. They're just picking a date and time that they wanna meet. They're giving us a name and an email address. But look at all the information we get from this. The email itself, the event end and start time, the event URL, so where we're actually gonna host that event, right? Uh, the full name of the person meeting, uh, meeting notes, if they gave us a phone number, and in this case, the Zoom meeting link. So let's take a moment, we'll fast forward here and build all of these fields from Fillout over in Airtable. All right, now we have all of those fields created over here in Airtable. And of course, I've also picked the corresponding type of data for the field. So in the case of an event end time, I'm using a date field type with time. In the case of email, I'm using an email address. In the case of notes, I'm using long text block, etc. So we're making sure to match the right type of data for each of the fields that we're gonna be collecting information from. Now, flipping back into fill out, let's go ahead and refresh our Airtable connection now that we've built those new fields. And now we'll be able to see all of the fields here in Airtable and we can just map them. So now we have the field in Airtable called email that matches to the email field inside of fill out. It's so easy now to collect all of this information and just map it to the corresponding fields that we've created in our Airtable system. Thank you. 
Now we have all of our fields mapped. So when we receive this information and fill out, it will automatically create a record in Airtable with the corresponding data in the appropriate place. Now, one other component to look at here is that we can set up some conditions. So we can only run the integration here when a condition is met. So we might say, for example, uh, we only want to do this if the email is from a certain domain or if it's a start time in a certain span of time, like certain dates or something along those lines. The takeaway is we can conditionally limit when this actually creates the record and when it does not. We're going to assume that we want it to run in all conditions. So let's click up here and say finish setup and publish now. Now let's give this a test. We're going to come back here and go to share and on share we can copy and or open this form in a new URL. This is the live version of the form that we just created and you see here that people can schedule directly with us. I can make a selection for date and time and it's going to ask me for name and for email address. Once my form user fills out that information, they can click on schedule event and that's it. They're going to get that email on the back end, as I'd mentioned. Of course, we can also customize this screen right here after they submit the form if we want a little more tweaks or bells and whistles here. What I care about is collecting that data in Airtable. So let's flip now into Airtable to check it out. And as you can see, that data was captured here in our database. The email of the person who scheduled the event, the event end time and start time, I guess these should be reordered, the event URL right here. So this is the event itself. If I click on this, it's going to take me to the calendar event inside of my Google Calendar. You can see it right here. And if the person needs to cancel or reschedule, schedule, they even have a link that they can use to do that. Now back into fill out here, we see their name. This is what they gave us. We don't have any information from meeting notes or phone number as those questions were not on the form. And then most importantly, the actual place that the meeting is going to be held was also stored right here in Airtable. It was that simple to build that integration. This is what makes fill out just such a superior tool in general for form collection. But now that they've come out with their scheduler feature, as you can see, it's really taking things to the next level. I know we went pretty quickly in this video, so whatever questions you have, be sure to drop them below or swing by our website and ask. And in the meantime, my friend, keep on building.